Drag his beers, wines and spirits with you. So, I wasn't going to do a live and that, but fuck it, I will. So, I am. Hey, I'm off work for a week, so why not, I Abuse it. So, today, 28th of December, the beer in question is called The Four Hop Men of the Apocalypse. We've hit deepest, darkest limbo land from any seasonal celebrations and, and it's Monday. May as well be the flipping apocalypse. So it says, good evening. We will, f we will ever find our way back to routine. Will weekdays ends ever have meaning again? Good evening. No, I'm absolutely sweating. I've been up the bloody loft putting Christmas decorations away. Who knows, but we believe in you and at least you have a decent beer to drink. Good evening. So yeah, well, oh, it's just some shitty jumper I put on while I was working today. <laughs> I was going to bring down my t-shirt, put my t-shirt on, but I forgot. Good evening. So today it's Totally Broods, Four Hopmen of the Apocalypse. And uh, I've got to be honest, I ain't got a clue what it is. Um, oh, it's an IPA, 5.2%. You've got to love the artwork. Fantastic artwork on these cans. <laughs> Good evening. I doubt I'm the world's king, but... So, doesn't really tell you anything about the beer, so we might as well just dive straight in. Yeah, I've been taking Christmas tree decorations down all day. First the garden, then the inside. So it's been a long day. Oh, past nine this morning I started. Just stopped. Tomorrow we've got the cleanup operation. But at least all the decorations away. Six suitcases. God knows how many boxes. Good evening. Ah, welcome. So yeah, totally brewed. Yes, Barney's Marshmallow Stout. Lovely. Although, to be honest, I find Brewdog's Marshmallow Stout is a bit nicer. So, yeah, this is an IPA, 5.2%. Day four, there we go. Day four of the Crimbo Limbo. A £40 um, box, shall we say, with beers to last you from Christmas Day to New Year's Eve. I hope so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not for New Year's Day, though. Good evening. So this is an IPA. doesn't really say anything on the tin. So, you know, if I was being critical of anything, the artwork's beautiful. But maybe a little bit of info on the tins. Good evening. So as you can see, Amber Paul, Whitehead. For me, subtle citrus. It's a bit cold in here. Subtle citrus. I've been sweating my head off putting Christmas decorations up. The loft, the dog spragged the path, did a poo on the path, didn't see it straight in it. I thought, you little swine. Done the gardens today, front and back. Put the stuff back in the shed, discovered I, 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 I either had mice or rats in my little shed. So I've had to barricade the sheds. There's, I've, it's, it's been, there's, it's been, you know, they could walk in at any stage anyway. And as you know, with your gardens, if you've got a gar any garden, you could have issues. <laughs> so, let's have a try, eh? Yeah, nine, half past nine this morning I started. So, done front and back garden. Sorted out the, the little shed. And there's not much you can do about rats and mice, apart from change the environment. The thing is, rats and mice, they're everywhere. There's nothing we can do about them. But obviously, to, to sprag, I mean, I've put mouse traps around the garden now. I'll sprag the little bastards. Pardon my French, for anyone who don't speak, I swear. But um, I will have them at some stage. But I'm going to smash a load of bottles up and put a load of bottles underneath my decking. Just so they slice their feet and kill themselves, hopefully. But, you know, do what you do. The last thing you want is in your house. Shed's one thing, house is something very different. Trust me, I know. Nice. They're both very different. They're both very different, but they're both excellent plum porters. Um, the real king of the tests would be to get the Grand Reserve port-infused um, porter. 
get the normal Titanic plum porter, then get the St. Peter's. And if you was really being top notch, try and find the, I think it's L Goods plum porter. And uh, I've tried some plum stouts, and to be honest, none of them come close. Um, but that's me being brutally honest. So it's hazy pour. It's cold in this beer room, though. It's like three, four degrees. So are we all drinking? You know, if I'm not the only one. Don't want to be the only one drinking. Although, what I'm going to do, I was going to try and lower the reviews. I had, I had a nightmare last night that I was fat. And funny, you know, for people that are, you know, no, no snow at all. It is cold, though. And I had this horrible nightmare that I put masses of weight on. I mean, I put some weight on, but... And I tell you what, it freaks you out when you have, you know, nightmares that are, are very real, you know, that, that you can relate to. I mean, there's some nightmares where you're falling out of a window and you're just about to hit the floor. And, uh, you know, that's one sort of... I mean, I don't usually remember nightmares and dreams, but I remember this one. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. I mean, I've got a load of game consoles set up, although my big TV looks like it's gone on the blink, so I need to get a new 4K TV for the shed. But I've got about 12, 12 game consoles, and uh, yeah, a music offering for the shed would be good. But I don't like to piss the neighbours off, you know. There's, there's limits, you know, too much, because if I do it, then they start doing it, then I'll get pissed off if they're doing it too loud. Good evening. Oh, good on you. Oh, it depends on the beer in question, doesn't it? If I was going to say a pub snack to go with any beer, port scratchings by a mile, you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Although if you're having a nice mixed grill, nice pint with a mixed grill, sadly, none of us are going to pubs. Well, not many of us, anyway. I think most of the country's in four. I mean, we're in three where we are. And even the ones that are in um, tier one have gone to tier two. You watch it go up a tier come Wednesday or whenever he does this new announcement. Because the levels in in, Brit in England especially are so high. And, uh, you know, we're already in the shit with money, aren't we? So, oh, oh, something, some ridiculous amount of money we do. I mean, luckily, Britain can bounce back, but... No, 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 not heard of that. Bless you. That a Christmas present then, or is it uh, has someone sent you a voucher for free, or if you want it? So, yeah, nice. More on the subtle side of ABVs. It's an introduction into craft beer ABV. Uh, IPAs, rather. Jesus Christ, I'll get there in the end. Um... Oh, bless you. We'll have to have a meet-up, definitely. As long as, uh, you know, you can. <laughs> you know, as long as it all goes ahead. Yeah, grand time reviewing beers. Now, that'd be something, wouldn't it? Yeah, three beers in. Yeah, tastes great. Come on, get another one. That's how it is, isn't it? You know, you forget what you, that you're supposed to actually be reviewing. I've gone, when I've had too much to drink, you know, it goes out the window. It's just, yeah, let's neck it. And uh, trying to pick out flavours. Yeah, that'd be something interesting, wouldn't it? Especially if you're in Nottingham anyway. Come to the beer room. As long as we're vaccinated and we're not dirty, as it were. You know, non-vaccinated. King Goblin. Oh, what a classic beer. You know, Witchwood, a.k.a. Marston's, got onto something amazing with that beer. And I think their range, they could do so much with their range. There's, there's loads of Marston's beers and Green King that have disappeared over the years that need bringing back. Especially if we're going to go back to normal. We need Pumpkin back. We need... Oh, the other one. The other... I forget his bloody name. That Dunkle Fester. That needs to come back. Bar Humbug certainly needs to come back. And there's loads down... Arrain. Oh. <laughs> Doubt that. I need to get back on the review, don't I? So, yeah. Very much an IPA for those just stepping into the waters of IPA. It's not in your face, uh, citrus. It's just nice. Just a subtle introduction. 
not all IPAs need to smack you in the face. You know, some of the traditional IPAs are really nice as well. And uh, I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example of an IPA that is very strong. Stone's go-to IPA. Bloody hell, I've had that. And even I struggled with that. It, the hops and were through the roof. It was just so intense. You know, there's a balance for everything, isn't there? I mean, this is called Four Hop Men of the Apocalypse. Yeah, I've read it right. Yeah. It's a nice beer. Yeah, I entered that for a while. I remember Stone's go-to IPA because I've tasted nothing like it in my life. It was just so intense, the hops. The hops on this are there, but they're just nice in the background. No, I'd like to, because um, near Peterborough is um, low-cost beer. Their shop is near Peterborough. It's in Cambridge, so it's not far away. I'd like to go down there. We want to do some travelling around this year, especially after this year, you know, this year coming. Especially after this year, when we've all been sat inside, you know, bored sick. Yeah, you know, some beers just aren't re-drinkable. I mean, like, as beer fans... We all want to try new beers, don't we? You get a new beer and drink it once you think, I'm not touching that again. The best beers are the beers that are re-drinkable. Yeah, yeah, make a statement with your beers, but make it re-drinkable. Otherwise, what's the point with a lot of beers? You know, you're cutting your market off. That's why I suppose Marston's and the likes of Green King do their stuff sells massively because a lot of it is re-drinkable. A bit boring, but re-drinkable nonetheless. Hence this fella. Very re-drinkable. If you don't miss your mouth, obviously. Good evening. I mean, I wish that the likes of Green King, now I know they bought out Hardy and Hanson's, would bring out some more of those beers. But we've had foxes on the street. After I had rats around the house last year, and actually in the house, uh, I, we have to change the way we do things. We never, ever leave black bags outside anymore. We we always make sure the bin lids are, are clamped shut. We never leave food. Because obviously, where there's food, mice and rats will come to your house. We've got a neighbour across the road. And they've got birds. So all the bird food is all over the floor. And it, it entices rats from anywhere. They smell it in the air, don't they? And they all go to the food source. Hence why, around my area, look... I've got some dickhead neighbours across the road. They really are dickhead neighbours. And uh, they've got two new cats. And there's obvious reason for that. You know, there's a reason why people who don't have cats are all of a sudden getting cats. There's, you know, there's a re that reason. And it's not a nice reason either. You know, they, they are horrible vermin. Squirrels are one thing. They can be little shits. But uh, rats are something else. You know, not nice. So I'm going to do this review. And then I'm going to review something nice. Yeah, I need it after today. I need a treat. I've got a nice Imperial Stout to review. Or I'm going to review the uh, Tiny Rebel 13%. I'm not sure which. Don't want to get too steam in there. You know, there's limits on what the wife will tolerate. And I'm sure I'm not the only bloke out there whose wife gives him shit if she's pissed up. Especially about seven in the evening. Pissed up and falling asleep. It's not good, is it? I mean, me, I've been staying up till three o'clock the last few nights watching TV. That'll all change next week when I'm back at work. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that there's going to be some lockdown. There's going to be some um, furloughing going off. You know, two or three days at work, two days furlough. That would be me. If anything, furlough. For some people, especially if they know their job's safe, furlough has been the most amazing thing. Yes, you haven't even got to go to work. You sit at home. And it depends. I suppose it depends on your missus, your kids. You know, if you've got kids that are little, little shitbags. And a message you don't really get on with. Good evening. Oh, already? Bloody hell. I'm going to do some alcohol free stuff. Well, I might do a bit of dry ish. <laughs> I will be doing some dry because I won't be drinking what I'm drinking now because obviously you're at work. So you get home from work. The first review I'll be able to do is about six o'clock. So it'll be, it'll be drier. January.
Ooh, fruity beer. I love this. I love the quirky stuff. This this is a nice beer. Yeah, damp January. That's what you want, isn't it? Yeah, Tiny Rebel makes some nice stuff. Um, I was going to try. I didn't have the money at the time, and they brought out nineteen beers, all one of each, with a with a, a glass. Forty six quid at the time. And I thought, that is banging. You know, loads that I've never had before. And bloody, every time I got the cash to get it, because obviously we're not all rich, you know, you can't all spend 50 quid on a, a load of mixed beers. By the time I got the cash, they pulled the offer. So, gutted. Good evening. I'm at nearly the end of this review, but... Um, Another review is coming. I've got a nice imperial stout to review. So, yeah. Subtle on the nose. Subtle citrus on the nose. With, with a slight hops on the nose. In the taste, again, it's all about subtleness. Ooh, 6.8%. Very nice. Um, yeah, all about subtleness. A very, very good introductory craft beer. Craft IPA, rather. You know. It's not trying to make too much of a statement. It's one of them that's going to gently break you in. Good evening. Gently break you in, into the world of craft beers. And they don't all, you know, it's the same with wines or, or any drink, really. No, I can't see me doing it. I, I, I suffer of anxiety. I can't do dry, you know. It's either that or start taking tablets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's been out of gallivanting today. I've been out, I've been working all day, so I think I might get let, let off of a bit. As long as I ain't got the ass absolutely steaming. Although, to be fair, I've had no food today. Working all day. This is actually the third drink of the day. Ooh, very nice. There is so many beers out there. You know, no one person could try every one of them. No one. You know, I reckon if there was 20 of you, or even 30. There's no way you'd be able to go through all the beers. Be a cracking try. But, uh, you know, I don't think I could go through all the beers that just are in Nottinghamshire alone. Never mind the rest of the country and the world. Brewdog's Layer Cake, very nice. Lovely mar marshmallow, if I remember rightly. Marshmallow uh, drink, yeah. Very similar to Barney's. Barney's Marshmallow as well. So, yeah. Oh, God, this glass is freezing. Got to say, for day four, that was really nice. Not the sort of beer I would normally buy, but that's because Oakham Citra. Yeah, it is nice. One of the Oakham Citra, if if remember rightly, was one of the first beers in Britain that actually used the Citra hops. So it says on their thing. Brew Dogs Punk IPA, ooh. I'd like the double punk. I haven't tasted it yet. Then again, there's lots I haven't tasted. Yeah, I've got a gas fire in front of me. Only problem is, I've only just come down to the shed. So it's a little bit cold in here. It doesn't have time to warm up. I'm getting a little bit warmer. But holding that glass with freezing cold beer in don't help. So, this one. A good, subtle IPA. Nice strength. You know, what is it, 5.2? Yeah, you can see it. I mean, the artwork's fantastic. They do do some good artwork. Good Nottinghamshire uh, brewery. Oh, I'm doing a second review. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it was Oakham, Citra, who were the first. So, it says on their beers. I've, I've read into it before. Might be wrong, mind you. <laughs> Yeah, it was a nice enough Christmas. A bit strange, got to be honest, you know, with all this what's going off in the world. And not only been able to meet family for one day. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of beers. I mean, Castle Rock do an Harvest Pale, and that's amazing on cask. In bottle, not quite the same. Ah. I suppose that's like a lot of things, isn't it? These politicians claiming they've all done this. Not far away from me, Oakham. Nottingham's not that far from Oakham, really. 
Although I wouldn't like to live in some of them areas. Yes, reviewed it yesterday or two days ago. Estrella Glacia, that is. Yeah, Oakham makes some nice beers. You know, Scarlet Macaws, a nice one. Oh God, I forgot some of the rest. I've got some of theirs to collaborate, some of their Marks and Spencer ones that they've done. So yeah, I need to kill this review so I can get the next review out, otherwise I will get a bollocking. <laughs> yes, they're very traditional. Yeah, not they're not certainly not a craft brewery, but they do see, do, as far as I remember, they do do some craft stuff. It is for Hopman of the Apocalypse. Yeah, it is nice. It's a nice. And these fellas, totally brewed, they do do some nice beers. Some very nice beers. Some strong buggers as well. 10%, you know, 7%. Some really good beers. Not the cheapest, but a lot of the craft stuff isn't cheap, you know. Uh, you don't get supermarket price for some breweries. Anyway, better kill this review off so I can start my next review. Out of five, for me, around about a 4.35 me yeah it was okay very nice very subtle and a good day for and uh that's it for this review and uh back in about two minutes with another see you in a minute cheers and not be long <laughs>